We talked about internal stakeholders who need predictive visibility beyond what you would really want to do with Agile and tactics and ideas to work through that. Sometimes those stakeholders are big customers, and this happens all the time with companies I work with. They have a large company that they work with, it's a customer, and they're used to getting detailed schedules, but the firm is trying to adaptively solve their customer's problem with Agile, so those big schedules would kind of kill that process. And so what do they do? Well, in this video, we're gonna talk about why this happens and what it looks like so that you can identify it and kind of understand maybe where it's going. And then in the next video, we're gonna talk about strategies to work through this with your big customer. Let's talk about why do big companies work with little vendors? Well, relative to them anyway. One is there's this basic economy of scale. They have a certain job that they need done and they're a big company, they have some core business that's allowed them to get to that size and you're focused on providing a very specific solution that you're totally focused on. So there's this sort of basic economy of scale thing which is why the software business exists. You have a certain expertise and in today's hyper-competitive operating environment, you really need to be focused on your core business and be able to iterate on it and move really fast. And likewise, you need capabilities that complement that. So your ability to be super focused on your problem area and executing at the cutting edge of what's successful and what's good practice in that area is important to them. And then finally, it may just be easier for them to delegate this job to somebody else. They don't have to discuss it internally and make calls on it and so forth. They can trust you that you're gonna do the best possible thing for them in whatever functional job you're slicing off and delivering for the big customer. And yet, things can still totally break and they often do. So here's a kind of little narrative about how that looks so you can identify this as it's happening. Big company has a meeting and they say, well, you know, we need software to do X and we're not really, it's not our core competency, so why don't we buy it from this smaller company, Clever SaaS Incorporated? And they decide, okay, that sounds like a pretty good idea, let's do it. And there's a, there's a project manager assigned to this inside the big customer that go to some users and says, you know, we're, big co we're paying a lot of money for this software, is there anything special you'd like to see? And big company user says, I don't really know, but I guess I should tell this person something. So they say, you know, they should make all the buttons blue. And the project manager of the big company then says, all right, I'm going to go make it happen. So he goes or she goes to the clever SaaS person, the smaller company that's supplying them the software and says, well, you know, we've decided we just need all the buttons to be blue. You, let's say this is you. You say, well, look, let's talk about what problem you're trying to solve, why you want them to be blue. Maybe I can give you some better ideas from what we've learned out in the field. And they say, look, you want your money, you better give me these blue buttons. And you need the money, so you say yes. And you're not able to work with them on a problem-focused way to work through this, this issue, this problem. And so what happens? Well, um, you go now to your developer. Let's say this is you. You're the let's say product owner, person that interfaces with the big customer and brings items to the Agile team and you say, I don't know why, we, there's no like really good reason, but we have to make the buttons blue. So now this kind of breaks your whole Agile plumbing and the team members say, all right, well, I, I'm not doing what I think makes sense anymore. There's no narrative behind this, all the stuff that we decided was important and things that made our product work well are kind of out the window now for this feature. So, you know, obviously they're not gonna probably, they're just gonna struggle, anybody would, to go after it with the vigor and insight and perspective that they have normally. And so they're gonna struggle and they're gonna do the best they can, but you're ultimately gonna probably just focus on doing literally whatever it is they said in this situation. So they get this back, this is them, they go to the user, the user says, well, yeah, it's okay, but I don't know. I don't really like the blue buttons because this didn't make sense in the first place. So this is bad and this keeps happening. Eventually, this whole thing will come full circle and whoever at your big customer decided to buy this software, they have this meeting again and they say, I heard all the buttons are blue and they suck now and we don't like the product. So this is a kind of a little bit of an exaggeration, a hyperbole around this. But the purpose is to show you the, the, the kind of bad way that things can go. And 
This happens, things like this happen all the time. So how do you avoid them? That's what we'll talk about in the next video.